On this episode of Learn With A Classic, the SU Fuel Pump. Welcome back to Learn With A Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope that you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some great Jaguar and classic car related content. So you can navigate to my channel down below, check out those videos. While you're down there, subscribe and hit the bell notification and you won't miss any future updates. A few months ago, I made a video about SU carbs, just an overview of how they work and we took one apart and made a detailed look inside of it. I am making a video series on rebuilding these carbs. However, I'm waiting on the parts that should be here next week or the week after, and then I can start rebuilding them. But before we do that, I thought we could have a look at the fuel pumps as well. This is an SU fuel pump used on a lot of British cars. They looked a little different over the years. This is from a mid 60s uh, Jag, but they look exactly the same on my 70s Jag over there. So all it is, is a valve body here on the bottom and basically an electromagnet up here that pulls up and down on a little diaphragm in here and pumps fuel. So if you ever use one of those bellows uh, in your fireplace when you want to get the fire going, and this is basically the same thing. It's an electric bellows that pumps fuel. So let's head over to my workbench. We'll take this one apart. We'll have a look at all the parts inside, what makes them work, and we'll have a look at the most common issue. Because up here are some points. It's basically like the points inside your distributor. And just like the points in your distributor, they can get dirty, they can get worn out, and then the pump won't work. You might have seen someone use a hammer to smack on the back of this to get it going if your car won't start. And that is a, um, a solution to fixing a broken fuel pump might get you home, but it's definitely not a permanent solution. So I'll show you how you can take it apart, how you can clean those points, and how that will usually be enough to get you back on the road. So here we are at my workbench. I went and grabbed a fitting just to show what they usually look like. This is one of the fittings off my 1966 S-Type. So it screws in here, and then there's a banjo fitting that screws on as well. And then there's two washers on here, and then the fuel pipe goes off to the side. So that's how they usually connect, but it's different on different vehicles. They made many different SU uh, pumps as well as they made many different SU carbs. So many of them look a lot like this one. You can definitely follow along if you have one for maybe an MG or a Morris or a Riley. You can definitely follow along. They look pretty much the same inside. Top half, almost always stayed the same. It's just a valve body that changed. And on the later Jags with V12s and carbs, you got a massive one of these. It's double-sided pumps. So you have one side here, one side here as well, and two diaphragms, and they're pumping on both sides. And those are massive, massive pumps, but they work in the same way. So you can definitely follow along. Doesn't matter which one you have. It's the same as with my SU carb video. You can follow along. There are many different models, but they all basically work the same. So let's start taking it apart. We'll start by taking off the plastic cover up here, getting to the points, just held in place with a little brass nut up top here where the positive power lead goes into the pump. When you take these apart, Make sure that you know where all the nuts and washers go because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of screws. So keep track of them. Here are the points. You can see them right there. They're at the top of them and if I move them. There's the bottom half of the points as well. And just like the points in your distributor, if you still have points in your distributor, you have a little condenser here. That's just to save the points. So they don't arc so much. And just like the points in your distributor, you need to set the point gap as well. And I'll show you how we do that later. First, we can continue disassembling it. I'm going to separate the two halves right now. So undo all these screws around here. We'll take off the top half and then we can have a look at the valve body. I've undone all the screws. Now we can separate the halves. There's a diaphragm in here, so be a little careful when you separate it, so you try not to tear it. 
Because often if you're just servicing the points, you can reuse the diaphragm. So here's the top half, here's that diaphragm. And if you look at the points, you can see what happens when the diaphragm is pushed up and down. They sort of flip over and that's how you manage to switch from up and down on this magnet here. So we'll set this to the side. Here are those two one-way valves. They're held in place with this little plate and pressed in place. Then on the sides, you have these chambers, which we can open up. So this is the outgoing fuel chamber. This is what it looks like inside. And here is that thin, thin little membrane here. So that's all that that chamber looks like. So if you rebuilt one of these, you will replace that. If you're just taking it apart to have a look at the points, which we're going to do in a second, don't open these up because you might damage them. It might be working just fine, but just taking these apart, you might damage it. They're very delicate. I'll open up this one as well. Ingoing fuel chamber. That one's also delicate. So if you're not rebuilding it, don't open up this side. I'm going to open it now just to show you guys. And on this side, you just have a gasket. Here's a cork gasket. Here you can see the chamber inside. So just take these off if you have new gaskets to replace them so it seals up and you want to clean the inside of the fuel pump. If you have really dirty fuel tanks maybe. But if you're just taking the pump apart to get it going again to have a look at the points, please don't open up the sides. I'm going to put all this to the side now and we'll have a look at the points. So the most common failure point on these pumps is the points. The car might not have been used for a long time. You get some oxidation on the points and they simply don't work. You can simply take the part and clean them. But I thought while this thing is still together, I'd show how you can check the gap as well. You have two little shoes going out here. Let's see if I can point with the screwdriver. So one gap is the distance between there and there. That should be 2.3 millimeters or 90 thousandths of an inch. Then you should have a gap up here between that top of the plastic here and the point over there. So the gap where my screwdriver is, and that should be 0 0.9 millimeters or 35 thousandths of an inch. The way you set this one is actually pretty simple. You bend that foot, a little up, a little down, until that gap is correct. And that foot up here, that little one there, that one gets bent up or down until that gap is correct. And that is really how you do it. In order to get the points out, you need to disassemble this whole top half. And that's the easiest way to clean them. You take out the diaphragm first. And yes, these little washers in here or a plastic ring that sits around the middle here will fall out. The plastic ring you'll have to take out or the washers like here will just fall out. That's to center the shaft and the housing. But the diaphragm it just unscrews and then there's a spring behind it. And that spring. Then the points are held in place by one screw up here and that pin over here. However, there's an electrical connection that goes up here. So you will need to remove a screw up here. Be really careful when you take this apart so you don't damage any of the electrical connectors. They're all pretty delicate. Now that one is disconnected there. We can loosen the top of the points here. You don't have to unscrew it all the way. You can pull out the points. Here's the top of them. And if you can see, they look very dirty. So we're going to take out the bottom ones as well. And that is done by simply pushing out this little pin here, pulling that out. And with a bit of jiggling, the whole assembly comes out. So here's the points assembly and you can buy these points brand new as well. If yours are completely worn out and the rest of the pump is fine, you can just buy the points 
But I'm just gonna get a little bit of fine sandpaper and we're gonna clean them off right now. Now they're nice and shiny. We'll do the other half of them as well. And they're nice and shiny also. This pump should work fine now. Just gonna re reassemble all of this. Now all that is lined up. We're gonna hook up this cable up here again. Put the little condenser back on and that screw and then we'll get the top of the points on again. Now you take the top half of the points and you slide them into place. Make sure that the contact points are right above the ones on the bottom half of the points. When you're happy with the placement, just screw them into place. Now you can start putting the diaphragm back in. This part is threaded and that screws into the bottom half of the points right over there. So it can be a little fiddly to get these into place, but it's basically holding the points still, turn this around and try and get centered. And then you screw this in place. Once you have it threaded, you just twist it in and you start checking. You see how the points are flipping over? You keep twisting this and checking until they just don't want to flip over anymore. It's a little weird to explain, but if you can see, that's how they look like in operation. So you want to set it to when they just stop doing that. So they don't flip over there. Sort of flips over there. Okay, so it flips over right there. But if I twist it one more hole, it's not gonna flip over. So then I'm gonna twist it back one hole and then a further four holes about. So one, two, three, four. And that should pretty much be enough for it to run smoothly. And that's what it should sound like. So that's the little clicking sound you hear when you turn your ignition on and the fuel pump is priming. That's the sound you hear. So now you also wanna check the gap here. So I'm gonna get some feeler gauges. We'll check the gap there and the gap up there. I have my feeler gauges here. This one is 35 thousandths. So it should slip between here and here. And there's a tiny bit of drag there, so that's perfect. If it wasn't correct, you could use a screwdriver or something to gently bend that tab there a bit until we get the right measurement. Then I got a few fuel gauges here. So this is 90 thousandths of an inch. And that should slide in to there. And there we go. Just some slight drag. So that's perfect. That one can also be bent with a screwdriver as well. That one's a little bit easier to bend than the top half. So that one's a bit easier to adjust. But now everything is adjusted. Everything is cleaned. And continue reassembling this pump and it should work just fine. So now it's a matter of getting these little brass things in here. If you're lucky, you have that big plastic clip that just clips in there instead. I'm gonna put the brass ones in here, put the valve body back together, and we should have a functioning pump. Now it's all back together. Before I test it and see if it works, just one word of warning. This is pretty soft metal here, so be careful when you tighten everything. Don't over tighten anything. Just tighten it enough and it's not gonna leak. I have the negative hooked up here. So I have a positive 12 volts here. Let's see if the pump works. That's how they should sound when they work. It's working just fine. So if this goes back in the car, it's definitely gonna work. And I did test it before, it would not power on at all. So the points were so dirty that it wouldn't work. So if yours isn't working, 
you have one pump like this in your car, it's been sitting for a while, try taking apart and cleaning the points and it might start up and work again, just like this one. Now we call that success. This thing is running just fine. However, there are of course rebuild kits and in many cases, it's a good thing to get a rebuild kit. Maybe your diaphragm is on its way out. Maybe it's torn. Maybe the valves are bad inside. So if it's been sitting for many years, I mean like five, 10, 15 years, get a rebuild kit or maybe even get a new pump. But if it's just been sitting for the winter and you get out and it won't start and it was running fine in the autumn, have a look at those points because if you clean them up, probably last you many, many more years. But that's it for today's video. If you liked it, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Why not subscribe if you haven't already and get more great videos like this every week. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Love With A Classic. I'll see you soon.